Hello guys, it's Leonardo. So today is the first set of videos about the Zim platform, okay? We are going to use on this training the micro Z board uh, and uh, also the Xilinx cable platform USB in order to program the FPGA, the FPGA part of the Zim. Well, uh, <coughs> we are going to cover topics like uh, uh, software acceleration, uh, co-simulation with, uh, with the FPGA algorithm or FPJ hardware is being simulated through the CPU part and I hope you guys enjoy it. Any questions please add in the comments of the video. Okay, let's go. So guys, let's talk a little bit about the Zinc architecture. Okay, what is the Zinc? Basically, the Zinc is a system of a chip composing of an ARM dual core processor and an FPJ part. Okay, uh, the, Z, the Zynx nomenclature of this, uh, this system is PS for the ARM part and PL for the FPGA part. Okay? The CPU and the FPGA part they communicate with a set of channels called AXI, okay? which is part of the ARM specification. The, the CPU part, the PS part, has nine interfaces, nine channels to communicate with the FPGA part. Okay? The, the AXI protocol, the AXI interface, uh, comes with three different modalities. The AXI light, the AXI for stream, and the AXI food. The AXI light is normally used for small, uh, when you want to transfer small pieces of data and you want to do some kind of processing. The AXI stream is normally used, for instance, if you are uh, if you're creating an algorithm and you want to pass to the FPJ part, a large set of data like videos, images, or any, any kind of stream. Okay? The Axi full actually implement, implement the full memory mapped IP core. And we are going to talk a little bit more about this later. Normally we, uh, we use more the Axi light and the Axi stream. Okay? The first question that we need to answer on how to, uh, why we use Zinc is why, what we can do, how can we take advantage of this platform. So basically, acceleration. Okay, it's a heterogeneous platform that you have a CPU and an FPGA working together and communicating quite fast. And what you want is just to accelerate. For instance, in, imagine that you have an algorithm that's supposed to be running in, in the CPU part and you need to accelerate it. Okay, so uh, what are the normal use cases that you use the, the Zinc? Image processing, DSP, and any other kind of acceleration. Okay. The software that we're going to use in this training is Vivalo, uh, Vivalo HLS, MATLAB Embedded Coder, and MATLAB HDL Coder. After this introduction, we're going to see a simple Hello World sample just to start. Okay? The next, uh, after this introduction, the next video will be about how to create a custom Axi light and use in conjunction of, this, uh, of the ARM part, the PS part. Okay? See you soon. Let's go. So, to start we create a new project in Vivado, okay, and we choose as a reference board our micro Z. As we do not have any previous uh, VHDL or Verilog code to add in this project, we just play next, next, okay. And, uh, well, now we choose the which board we are going to, to use, as mentioned before, the micro Z. You just go to boards and choose the vendor type or you just choose from a list okay now a nice feature in Vivado is that you can create a, a block design it's kind of almost like what Simulink have that you put your cores and you connect them in a block diagram way okay so we're just going to add our zinc. Okay, with the zinc there, you just click run block automation. So this is automatically add and connect all signals needed for this board to work. Okay, and then we are ready. Uh, one last point. Uh, after the block automation is finished, you need to generate an HDL code from this block design. Okay, you just right click and create, say create HDL wrapper and let Vivado manage everything for you. Okay, 
After this is done, we are ready. We can generate our bit stream, okay, and go to the next part. If you guys are used with the previous version of Vivado, call it easy, you're going to see that now in Vivado, the, the synthesis time and the implementation time can be, can be a little bit longer. But it's, this is more due to the size of the FPGA that are becoming bigger and bigger. Now, we just illustrate that the zinc part, the PS part, is kind of alone. We add no VHDL part yet. And, uh, well, now we're going to export this design, and including the bitstream, to be used in the Zynx SDK, which is the software that we use to write our programs. Well, now inside the Zynx SDK, there is an option that you create, uh, you create a new app and uh, after this app is created you just write a simple C program hello world uh, just one, one point to mention, we, uh, when we create this app we also create a BSP with which you have the current settings of the hardware that we just created in Vivado okay? so nothing new after this is done it's going to just create a simple C code and we just put hello world Well, when the software is done, we push the bit string to the FPGA, okay? And when this is done, we are ready to push our program to the PS part, which is going to execute the, uh, the program, okay? In the PS part, I mean, how you get the serial output? In the PS part, we all, you also have a UART uh, piece of hardware that is already there, ready for you. And uh, in the next videos, I'm going to show, for instance, how to use the Ethernet and other features, okay? Now we're just configuring the STDIO to our port. Is the UART cable that we, the USB cable that you are there, and uh, well, everything's working. So see you guys in the next video.